What's up, everybody? Did we film two episodes in one city? You'll never know. You'll never know. If you know, you, you know. know. And guess what? All three of us are in the know. <laughs> and you are not. All right. Hey, welcome back to Honest Spirits, where we... Try before you... Bye. I'm Grady. I'm Jason. And this is our friend... Gavin. Hi, Gavin. How's it going? I thought your name was Podcast Paul. Podcast Paul. I go by Podcast Paul, too. Okay. Okay, cool. Hey, uh, <laughs> we got some really interesting things on the podcast today. Uh, mm. We got a little side by side that we're gonna do, and we haven't done side by side in a while. Oh. Um, so this side by side that we're gonna do is a single barrel, which we don't normally do single barrels as well from our friends up at Woodenville up north. Local, local. And Gavin, why don't you tell us about this one that Jason's holding up right now? So that is a distiller's pick or distiller select. Um, so Woodenville recently did a. Single barrel distillers, kind of behind the scenes tour of Woodenville. Uh, you bought you bought this experience, and part of the experience at the end is you taste the single barrel, and you get a hand bottle it yourself, and write everything on there. Uh, you know the proof and all that fun stuff, uh, and get to learn a lot about Woodenville history. Um, but this is kind of unique in a Woodenville single barrel because it was picked by Brett and Oren, the founders of uh, nice. of Woodenville, and I think some other people were involved in that uh, at their company there uh, but this is a six and a half year ish um, single barrel okay and bourbon my... whiskey distillers pick real craft whiskey it says on the bottom Gavin what how and why is it different from the normal single barrels that we see in groups and store picks well most single barrels and even all Woodenville products they're 90 proof rye they're um, all their other bourbons they're finished bourbons and single barrels they're all five years Roughly five years old, five and maybe a few months thrown in there. So this is a little bit more age, so it's kind of a, a sneak peek, I guess you could say, as to what what is Woodenville look like. What with, could be? Yeah, what was a little bit more age to it. Yes. You know, because five years is a little bit on the uh, slightly younger side. Yep. Uh, we see a lot of uh, slightly younger things out of other offerings. Um, Fry Ranch, they're a grain of glass out of Nevada. They do. Um, a lot of cast strength stuff, which I've heard is awesome stuff. Is it Fry uh, Ranch or Frey Ranch? I've heard of both. Fry I know. And Frey. Uh, somebody needs to um, tell us. Starlight also has some super cool offerings, and they they do some similar um, similar age stated things in terms of their single barrels. I think most of those are four and a half to five years. So similar offerings. Hey, let us know if you guys have had a Woodenville pick that's just, like, absolutely stellar. What made it stellar for you guys? Or uh, what was maybe what's maybe the best Woodenville bottle that you've had, and why is that? Uh, we'd love to hear about that in the comments. So, um, on the left, we have the Total Wine pick, and on the right, we have the Distiller's pick. And by the way, the Total Wine pick is coming in at about 115 proof, while the... Distiller's pick is coming in at 117, so they're pretty close. Pretty this close. is the distiller's pick on, I think, I think he poured them uh, opposite. Not on our glasses. Okay. Okay. All right, so <laughs> on my left is the total wine? No, your left is the oh, distiller's. Buddy. Okay. On um, my left is the, is the distiller's, and on the right is the total wine. Yep. Okay. Are we doing total wine or distiller's first? I say we go total wine first. I agree. Okay. Total wine pick. Smells good. It does. Smells, smells good. Smells, yeah, smells yeah. like Woodenville, though. Pretty classic Woodenville. Yep. Single barrel. Uh, Jason, what are you? Or, uh, sorry, yeah. What are you getting on the palate? On the palate, I get kind of like a. I mean, it's little some graininess, but I get a nice soft creme glaze. Yeah. Like kind of like, um, I guess I don't know what that would be. Kind of like a vanilla-ish kind of uh, flavor going on. There's caramel that tastes like it's um, lightly charred. Burnt. Well, a little bit. Not okay. burnt, yeah. but like yeah. Uh, yeah. creme brulee. Charred. Toasted yeah. sugars. Yeah. Toasted sugars. There you go. And then you go it's to the It's good. It's good. I like it. First. And then the distiller's pick. It does smell a little different on the nose. I didn't get that right away. The nose is a lot stronger, I feel like, on the distiller's pick. I think so. I think it has a lot more flavor to it, on the nose at least. For me, 
this is a great example of what could be if wood was aged a lot longer. Yep. Need not even a lot longer, just a couple of years, because the complexity and the nuances are better. Yeah. They're not. They're not top dollar. They're not amazing. They're not incredible. But they're good. But they're good. Solid. They're really solid, yeah. man. Like, like okay, Woodenville, you do know we what you're doing. We see you. Here. We see you. That is, I get like a nice. Thick caramel note mm-hmm. on that wood that is Tiller's pick. It really is more you, pronounced. The age grain chewiness is gone. Yes. Yeah. None of that grain forwardness that I got on the, the Total Wine pick. Yeah. Um, well, I actually like them both. I do both I do taste the difference. Um, you know, I think that, again, for what's coming out of Washington State, I think Woodenville has a little bit of a corner on the market, or out of the Northwest in general. A I think corner in the Northwest <laughs> corner? <laughs> we've, had a, we've had a lot of local stuff. Um, we did an episode on Quartz Mountain, which is actually right here in our hometown, and they, they're doing some really cool stuff there too. But, well, I'll tell you what, man. Woodenville, for, for something that's distilled and aged in the Northwest, um, leaning towards maybe trying to taste like something that comes out of uh, Kentucky, Tennessee, or Indiana... It's not there, but it's good. It's good, man. It's solid. I, I would say that they're competing with Starlight. Yeah. Um, in terms of their, their, it's hard. They're competing with Starlight in terms of their single barrels, but Starlight's finishes and what they're doing with that whole barrel pick finish system is, it's unmatched. I think. I mean, you have the three major states. You got ten, you got Kentucky and Tennessee and Indiana, obviously, yeah. for when it comes to any bourbon or really American whiskey related stuff. I think outside of those three states, if you if you're gonna find a top quality contender for a whiskey, mm-hmm. I think Woodenville mm-hmm. is the one. Woodenville and Washington. Yep. Yeah, yep. I would agree with you. All right, um, let's go um, overall instead of doing each, uh, just a Woodenville complexity of both. I don't think that's fair. You don't think that's fair? No, because you're. I think you're the re- the whole purpose of the comparison. I think we should separate a little bit. All right, fair enough. All right, Gavin, why don't you start us off with the complexity of the total wine pick? Um, I'm going to go two and a half. And that's only because I feel like it's pretty, it's nice, it tastes good, it's a it's a nice sipping single barrel with some proof to it, but the it's kind of a two note, you know, the creme brulee, toasted sugars, and both. And then they kind of some grain forwardness. It's a little short. Okay. I think two and a half is fair. I don't think these are the most complex whiskeys that you're going to find on the market, not even close. Um, but they are definitely better than a lot of those one-note uh, whiskeys out there. So. I agree. I would say uh, 2.75 because the stuff that I've rated at 2.5 is pretty poor. Yeah. Um, uh, drinkability for the Total Wine? I, I like it. I, I would drink it. I, I don't know that I would seek this bottle out to buy it, but if it's in my collection, I'm drinking it for sure. It might be a second or third pour of the night if that's yeah. if that's kind, kind of a drinker. drinker. Yeah. It's a drinker. It's a drinker. It's a nice sipper. Um, yeah. Did, what did you score? Oh, uh, for drinkability, I'm going to give it a three. Three? Yeah. yeah. I'll, uh, I'm going to stick with two and a half. It's just kind of my metric on drinkability. I feel like the drinkability is kind of right on there with the complexity, in my opinion. Uh, but still, I think it's a... Uh, Crushable bottle. Yeah. I'm uh, two and a half, three. Kind of right there with you. It's not bad. It's not amazing. And then value. What do these bottles typically go for, guys? In Washington, unfortunately, they go for way too much because our Washington uh, Liquor Control Board... No, it's not them. I'm just kidding. The overlords. Uh, the overlords of, of Washington State have decreed that we have the highest liquor tax in the nation, and I hate it. What do you mean? It's the coolest thing in the world. I love giving Uncle Sam more money every time I want to buy a bottle. It's the best thing in the world. Liar! <laughs> um, all right, value. It's about 100. The, the single barrel picks are about 120 out the door-ish, right? Yeah, between 80 and 120. Yeah. Yeah, it's gross. Uh, if you go to... Like two. You can get a regular blended batch one cast strength. and a half value. One and a half? Yeah. Sorry. These values are... Outlandish. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to stick right there. I'd say... One and a half. It's not something that I don't pick them up in Washington. This was a gift. I told him I was a gift. Yeah. Um, well, why don't you just brag a little more? Yeah. <laughs> I have nice friends. What are you saying? <laughs> yeah. Braggadocious over there. Mm-hmm. All right, distiller's pick. What do we got for Lexi? I I say it's a little bit. It's definitely more complex. I'm mm-hmm. gonna say, but it's not super complex. It's not gonna blow your mind. I'd say three. Yeah, I, I'm right there with you. It's definitely a little bit more complex and more drinkable than the first one. So I'll, 
I'm actually going to give it a, a three on um, complexity and a probably a 3.25 on drinkability. Well, you know, drinkability, complexity. That's what we do sometimes, you know. If you know, you know, you know okay. If you don't know, you don't know. And, wow. But who knows? How about Ooh. you doing? Ooh. <laughs> Hello. Wow. Hello, friends. Hey, this is what we like to do sometimes when we're on our free time. We That's just, right. You know, Crazy. We combine we'll just, them. We'll just blend them. Yeah, blend them. And that complexity and that drinkability is night and day. Yeah. I'd say the distiller's pick has a has a drinkability has a complexity mm. drinkability or drinkability of like three and a half. I feel like it just drinks way easier. I feel like I just I can just go at this all day long and just. I'd say complexity. Oh, no, sorry. Drinkability and value are going to be like a, a three, both a three for me. Well, here, here's for the, the distillers. This because the distillers pick was a little bit less, but you had to pay for the tour, right? Well, it's a hundred dollars, and, it, and it, this is this was included in the tour, but this is not like something you can go and grab at a store. Correct. This is not something. The closest you're going to get in value to this is, and I think the tours are normally like twenty bucks. I think. Okay. So so figure eighty dollars for the bottle. Okay. So. You get the experience. The bottle by itself is an eighty dollar bottle, but you got to pay a hundred bucks to get it. I'd still put it out of three. Yeah. For me, you know, it's a, you can't really compare a Washington distillate to a Kentucky distillate, but when you're looking at it on the shelf and you're the buyer, would I rather drink barrel dovetail? Probably. I probably would. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. It's just it's better. Um, all right. Hey, don't forget to uh, smash that subscribe button down here. And Last... don't, don't be afraid to support local, because these guys are really doing a good job. They are. They really are. Video from last week <laughs> <laughs> is over yonder. Um, but hey, if you have a little blend or something that you did, just like we did on our last little pour there, let us know. Um, we really like to blend things there, Honest Spirits, and um, yeah. maybe we'll do another blending episode down the road. I don't know. We did do we did do one a couple weeks ago. Yeah. So if you're interested in that, go back in the archives. Go digging a little bit. But hey, we'll see you next week.